It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, I'm Gary Shorman, and this is a forum on Eagle Television. It's great to have you watching along. Our program's brought to you by Hayes Med. A few weeks ago, there were fires burning all over western Kansas, and there were some people out fighting that, people out helping control that. We have a couple of them on our program today. First off, Kenny Ness will join us, and we're going to have Kathleen Fabrizius here, and uh, we'll be talking about what they did and where they went. Actually, a part of Trigo County. And uh, Kenny, tell us a little bit about your position over in Trino County, because you're the assistant uh, fire chief for the volunteer fire department there. Yes, and uh, we're all volunteer. We just go as we're needed and go from there. It's just, you know, you got what called we do. All, you got called all over the state. Um, what got you in the firefighting business, first off? Well, I mean, what idea said, hey, I'm, I'm doing my job on the farm, I'm doing my job with the county, I need to go fight fires? A lot of it was the farm. You see your neighbor's place burning and, you know, you want to go help them out and you know, you know, that's the best way you can do it is, is volunteer to do it. And so you get hooked on it. Have you been surprised on that and on just how devastating those fires can be and how quick they are? Yeah, it, you know, out here it don't seem that bad, but as the other ones we went to, it, it's unreal how fast things move and, and how scary it gets. I, I get a chance to fly an airplane and I flew over that area and a couple of those areas later on and how quick the fire moved across some pretty good boundaries like the interstate and, and went across and then the wind changed and mm -hmm. it went back the other way and how quickly that fire, I say got out of control, but how quickly it spread. Yeah, and, and you know, it jumps the highways and stuff like that, but a lot of people don't realize that, and this is bad to say, but if you've got a rabbit that's mm -hmm. on fire, they'll go through a tube or or a culvert or whatever across the interstate and then you've got to start it on the other side. And away it goes. And there you go. One of the things I know that you did out of, out of uh, Trigo County and, and that area when you were doing it is that you got in a vehicle and just headed out. Where did you go uh, when those fires were burning? Because the process goes where somebody calls, they need assistance in a certain area and uh, you get a chance to respond. Do you have to respond or do you just, how does that work? No, you don't have to. It's, you know, you got to consider your job first, but then, you know, if you can volunteer and go, that's when you go. But it's, it's all up to you or your employer. You know, it, it's a lot to them that it's worth a lot to us that they let us go. And I suppose you do that too, so that somewhere down the road, somebody may reciprocate yeah. when Trigo County's on yeah. fire and you want to do that. So what happens when you say, we're going to head out? What's the next step? Do you go get your truck and just run down the road, or is there a lot that goes into that? No, there's, a, you've got to plan ahead, and, and it's hard to plan because you never know what's going to happen, but, you know, it's, you get there, and, and then you got to look things over and plan and look what's in front of the fire coming, or, or, or you know, it, it's hard to tell. Where did you head? during these last uh, sort of round of, of fires? We went to Reno County, at the, the last one. And then from Reno, we went to Clark County. What did you think when you drove up? You know, we've seen a lot of fires and all that, but it don't really head home until you see the big areas and, you know, the animals laying there and the houses that it's burned and, and it's, you really can't describe it because it's it's different every scene you go on, but each time you can't, you just can't vision what's going to happen next. Well, when you get there, you show up, you see this, this fire out of control. What do you do first? Who tells you what to do? Is there a command process when you show up and yeah. they say, here they come to rescue us or what happens? Actually, actually, when we get to, like when we went to Reno County, their shifts are set up from seven to seven. And uh, you've got to check in and everything and they will uh, appoint you an area or a division that you're, you will take care of. And then they've got a command there that you listen to them. And then it just, you know, they'll tell you where to go, what you need to do and, and all that. 
What's the main goal? Is it to stop the fire or to build a, a, a band or a combination? Because sometimes you can, build, you can stop an area where the, the fire will stop, but that gets hard to do when the wind's blowing like it was. Yeah, and like in Reno County, that's what they had to do, a back burn and stuff like that. But we mainly try and put it out, but there's times you can't do that. When it's moving so fast, you can't, can't keep up with the head of the fire. Then what do you do? Go down the road and start again, yeah, kind of, you, right? You got to go further and try again. Hope somebody ahead of you has got something, you know. And then we we were lucky the National Guard was there, and they used the, the helicopters, and that was interesting. To Where do you get all your the water and all the, the product you use to help put out the fire? How do, how do you get that? A lot of it come out of ponds and stuff like that, and the, the hydrants and stuff. But there was tankers coming. There was all sorts of tankers there waiting to give us water and stuff like that. It's well, it's amazing. How many people are part of your team, and, and, and how many participated in this whole project? I believe there's, seven, there's 70-some in, in Trigo County, volunteer firefighters. And, and uh, we took, to Reno County, we took uh, two trucks and four guys. That sounds great. What's your memory of the whole thing? I just hope it don't happen here. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, and, it, and it's a, a good feeling when you leave there, when you're sitting there eating dinner or something, the neighbors and all that, they come in and thank you. And, and you know, that's the best part of it. They had the appreciation of what, what you've done for them and how they appreciate it. Well, we'll talk with Kathleen a little bit because, you know, people, that's their home and that may be the only thing they have. And when you talk about that, you drive up and animals are dead and, mm -hmm. and their homestead is gone. Uh, that is just total devastation. Yep. So having somebody there, if nothing else, to listen, somebody there to help, somebody to help protect from mm -hmm. the next neighbor, mm -hmm. what a difference is it. Kenny, thanks for all your help on and doing that fighting fires. I'm with you. I hope we don't have one yeah, yeah. south of here with yeah. that big south wind yeah. blowing. We're going to get Kathleen on next. Is that okay? That's just fine. We'll get Kathleen on next. <laughs> Kenny Neff has been our first half guest here on The Forum. The Forum is brought to you by Hayes Med. We'll be back with more after this. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Pulse, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Pulse-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discreet access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Pulse powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Pulse. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. Hi, and welcome back to the second half of our forum program. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions for other programs, please let me know. It's gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. Had a couple calls last week with some great ideas for future program. Be sure and let us know. gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. You can also go on Facebook to our Facebook page. That's ECTV Forum, and you can put your suggestions in there as well. Just want to thank Kenny Neff for joining us on the first half of the program, a volunteer firefighter from Trigo County. Right now we have the emergency manager for Trigo County. Her name is Kathleen Fabrizius. Kathleen, good to have you here. Nice to be here. Now, you are part of this firefighting crew as well. Kathleen, tell us, what, what is Trigo County Emergency Management? What do you guys do in Trigo County? Um, basically, emergency management is coordination between all the agencies, the emergency service agencies. Um, we also write plans like emergency operation plans, mitigation plans, um, cover policies, procedures, um, look at needs of agencies down the road, um, how to get those needs met, whether it's radios, um, kind of just a little bit of everything. How did you get into this business? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. I was um, a journalist for 20 years. And you want to do my show here? <laughs> we could probably do that. No. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> My oldest daughter, or my youngest daughter graduated from high school and I was ready for a change. And this was um, a new department that they were putting in. And so I thought, what the heck? Um, 
had no background in that, but had background on the, you know, journalism side. So it kind of fits together somewhat. It's communication yeah, uh, it is. between back and forth, different departments and different things. Has that taken in today's world of all the things that go on, emergency management has taken a new role? Oh, definitely. It's taken a bigger role. Um, when things like this happens, this is what emergency management trains for, big incidents. Um, so it, it definitely. And then, you know, a lot of emergency managers have kind of gravitated toward the incident management teams. So we kind of specialize by positions on that team. So when you go to a big fire, you have um, you know, I spend weeks being trained in the position that I was in down there. Well, what did you, what was happened that day uh, when you get the call? There's big fires. They're actually burning kind of in different areas across Kansas. But what's the thought process that goes into an emergency manager who's sitting there saying, okay, how do I make sure we protect our county here right. and yet be able to send teams like Kenny and his group over there to, to help fight? Uh, well, and basically um, what happened as far as the IMT team is, on that Saturday, um, we, we were sent out a text saying we want to put a team on standby. There's a big fire in Reno County, so um, I responded that I was available to go, could go for up to seven days. Um, that night about midnight, um, I get the call that the team's been pulled up, we've been deployed. So um, you pack, <laughs> not knowing, you know, are you going to spend mm -hmm. one day or ten days? Um, and then you know you're you're letting all of your agencies know that this is where I'm headed. If something happens, you know, get hold of me. I'll be back here. Um, so was down there for probably three days when we were running out of resources as far as in Reno County itself and our neighboring counties. So we started sending out messages and um, sent one to Trigo. The fire chief called and said, you know, we can send trucks. When do you need them? We, you know, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m you know, for the shift. So that's kind of how that takes place. I asked Kenny the same question when you drove, when he drove up about what his first thoughts were, because some of those fires were scary. Um, what did you think when you drove Very up? scary. When I first got there that morning, it was the fire that was on the east side. It was the Jupiter Hills fire. Um, and, you know, kind of by Monday um, at noon, we kind of thought, you know, we're going to be going home because we had that Jupiter Hills fire out. Then the fire up in Highlands began. And that fire spread into Rice County, so then it, you know, suddenly we're not only dealing with the Jupiter Hills fire, but we're dealing with a fire in the Highlands Golf Course where there's multi-million dollar homes um, and going into more than one county. So then you're looking for more resources. And then when the wind switched, it came back up on um, Hutchison. And as part of our team, we had to make um, our team has different members. We take the command system and split up between operations, logistic, which is ordering stuff. I'm a public information officer. We had to decide within a very few minutes what we're going to do. And we had, they have a reverse 911 down there, so we blanketed, sent it out that this is the area we're evacuating. So we evacuated, um, I think there was around 7,000 people that were in shelters that first night. Well, I'll talk about that process because those of us that you know live in our homes and and you want to protect your homes that's not an easy thing to do do most people are they compliant or what do you run um, into a lot of people are um, very few people stay you know we told them turn on your sprinkler systems um, you know take your dogs with you and evacuate and we didn't lose one life so we figure we did the right thing mm -hmm. Um, it, it's very hard for people to want to leave their homes because they left behind, you know, cattle, they left behind horses, they left behind, you know, maybe cats, chickens, whatever it is. Maybe they didn't take their dogs with them. But it's a very hard decision to make. It really well, is. You guys did a tremendous job of, of helping out because I know each area has their own emergency team, but you can't handle fires of that magnitude no. with what you just have. And so that ability to help county back and forth. And again, we don't want that to happen here. No. Not but at, at the same point, being able to bring that into play. Are there any lessons learned from what happened there when you take a look? Because how did these fires start? And secondly, there were so many of them that seemed to get started in different parts of the state. Well, I think the biggest probably lesson learned is just the amount of fuel that was out there. All the cedar trees that had grown up, and they've grown up next mm -hmm. to houses. And defensible space is huge. If you have a house and you have all these cedar trees growing up next to your house, get rid of them.
because they burn so hot that even if you have like the cement siding or whatever, it was actually burning behind that siding and it was burning the wood. So, you know, you need to clear out in the spring, you know, all the leaves that have blown in there, that's just all fuel for that fire to burn right up next to your house. Your gutters is the same way. A lot of people have lawn furniture that's sitting out there and they have all this debris that's setting it as fuel for a fire. So, mm -hmm. you know, that it, it is a number one. Um, just having a plan. If we have to go, what are we, you know, how are we gonna go? Um, and the sprinkler systems were a big learning curve down there. That saved a lot of homes. So I think we ended up burning nine homes. We probably would have done 10 times that if it hadn't been for sprinklers. So get the sprinkler systems on, yep, had even thought right. of that as being a way you, you just wet that area around your home, which really helps. And if you, if you saw the pictures, you would see houses and you would see, oh, probably 10 foot diameters of the green grass where that sprinkler system had been on. And that's what saved that house. When you take a look at that, what surprised you and what memories do you have coming back that were like, wow, that's surprising. Um, the night when we evacuated that many people, because our entire county is only 3,000 people. So when you start evacuating that, in my world, what am I going to do with all these people? And working the public um, information side of it is like, you know, trying to get out. Getting out in front of social media is huge because there's all these questions. And when you're the only one sitting there, you're answering those. You're trying to get a media release ready. You're being bombarded. You know, everybody's wanting questions of you and you don't have the answers right now. So it, it's very difficult. Um, Good thing you have that journalism background. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> it comes in handy, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I'm going to shift gears because uh, we're also coming up the tornado season. Yes, The definitely. bad storm season. We lived through a couple weeks ago just this uh, crazy ice storm yes. here with piles of ice. I get yep. a call, I'm traveling, I get a call, and there's a snow drift of ice yes. in the backyard. Tornadoes are a big part, and, and you play into that mm -hmm. as well, Definitely. and the, the ability to be out and rescue and help people and stay alert. Any advice as we go into the tornado season? The same thing applies. Um, have a plan. Know where you're going. Know where the rest of your family's going. Have a plan for your pet, because sheltering pets, you know, you need to provide for them. You need to have enough to, to be self-sustaining for 72 hours. That includes water, food, batteries, you know, cell phones, you can get the chargers for your cell phones that are solar or whatever, get one of those, you know, have the ability to be self-sufficient. Yeah, that's a great idea, you know, we have one of those in our house, we kind of have a basket that has that stuff in, but, you know, I'm not sure the last time we've up updated yeah. that basket and, right. and to make sure that the batteries there are still good, the flashlights, right. all those sort of things that are in place, do that. Is there, is there a list somewhere you guys have that somebody um, can go to? You can to go to um, ready.gov, okay. and it is a FEMA website, and it lists all kinds of things that you need personally, that you need for pets, that you need to think of. You can also run out copies of plans, and you can put in the plan. We're going to meet at the tree in the backyard, you know, after it's over or whatever it be. So, Good idea. And, you know, you have a group of volunteers. Kenny was one of those. We're talking about, you know, 70-some volunteers. How important is that to emergency management? Those are huge. Those are um, what I rely on a lot when, um, you know, I need help. I know those guys are just a phone call away and they're there to help. Well, thank you, Kathleen, for all you do. Sure. Thank Kenny as well for the work they did to help other Kansans across the state. You never know when that's going to come back through and we'll have help from other parts of the world as well. And that's why we do what we do. Kenny Ness was here earlier. Kathleen Fabesius has been our guest right here on the forum on Eagle Television. Thanks for watching. Forum brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. It's a beautiful day in our super high speed internet, great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected.